Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's our uh, great uh, pleasure to be invited here as a uh, keynote uh, speaker to talk about the wheel problem of high-speed wheel rail system in China. Uh, this is a joint uh, work with uh, Professor Jing and uh, Wen and Dr. Zhao. Uh, I will uh, present the first half and uh, the second will by Dr. Xing Zhao. About the background, first of all, I would like to uh, give a very brief introduction of uh, Chinese high-speed railway. As you know, the, in the last decade, Chinese uh, high-speed railway got a very rapid uh, growth. Uh, here, I just give a very brief uh, uh, overview. The first high-speed railway in China is the Beijing-Tianjin high-speed railway. Uh, that line was uh, opened uh, uh, before the Olympic Games uh, at Beijing. Uh, uh, before August 1st, 2008. And at that time, the operation, the, I, I mean the maximum operation speed was 350 km per hour. But this line is very short, only uh, 100 uh, km. And uh, the, the first long distance high speed railway is the Wuhan, Guangzhou high speed railway. And, uh, larger than 1,000 kilometers. Also, the operation uh, speed at that time is 350 kilometers per hour. And that was the end of 2008. The Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway could be the uh, high-speed railway with the high, highest standard in China, maybe also in the world. Um, the maximum design speed at some section uh, reached 380, but now we don't say uh, this. Uh, this line opened uh, in June 2011 and uh, with also 350. There is a special high-speed railway line with, uh, in the severe current area that is harping Dalian line. And uh, you can see from this slide, at the beginning of the opening, the operation speed in the winter season only 200 km per hour due to some serious problem of first uh, heave. And uh, since 2015, we operate the uh, uh, maximum operation speed in 350, both in winters and in summer. The longest high-speed railway we can now say from Beijing to Hong Kong. And uh, the Hong Kong section just opened uh, this day. So uh, this line, more than 2,000 kilometers uh, This, uh, this map shows the current operated high-speed railway network in China. And there is a, a originally planned uh, four longitudinal and four lateral uh, trunk line. I just showing you this uh, network. The total mileage of Chinese high-speed railway exceeds 25,000 kilometers which means the total marriage is larger than that of all the high-speed railway line in other countries in the world. And uh, here we show, just show the rising history of Chinese high-speed test uh, speed in only last two decades, uh, that is uh, 20 years. So it's a very uh, short history. From uh, 1995, the maximum test speed, just the test speed, only 151 km per hour, and to currently 
486.1 kilometer per, uh, per hour. That was achieved at the Beijing Shanghai high speed uh, railway line before the opening of that line on this, uh, in December uh, 20, 2010. Compared with uh, the test record in other country, Chinese uh, the high speed test uh, test speed rec record ranks the second in the world. About the future planning, uh, just uh, modified uh, last year by the government by. 2020, the total mileage will be 30,000 kilometers. By 2025, will be 38,000 kilometers. And the most uh, important change in the planning optic is the four longitudinal and four lateral uh, trunk line will be upgraded to eight longitudinal and eight lateral. As you know, Chinese high-speed railway pass through area with very uh, diff different climate and, uh, and also complicated geology, uh, so just to show uh, like uh, this figure. From very North uh, east, very cold region, to the south in Hainan province, very humid tropical region. And from uh, west, there is a very strong wind area in Xinjiang and the desert area. And uh, uh, for the eastern part of China, uh, there is a very soft soil foundation. And in our city in Chengdu, there is a Sichuan province and uh, southwest China. There are earthquake area, so very com uh, complicated uh, uh, running uh, condition. Also, there are a great variety of trains operation in China. This uh, slide shows quite uh, uh, different uh, high-speed EMU used in Chinese high-speed railway. From the beginning, CI uh, to one, two, uh, five, and to currently, the Fuxing, the Chinese new Fuxing uh, series, uh, running in Beijing Shanghai high speed uh, line. Now, uh, also to the maximum operation speed with 350 kilometers per hour. As you know, uh, there, is a, there was an accident in uh, Wenzhou uh, in 2011. The maximum operation speed uh, cut down to 300 km per hour. Uh, but now we go up to 350 with the Fuxing uh, EMU. And, uh, also, we have quite uh, many types of uh, track structure, including four non-ballasted track structure adopted in our uh, high-speed system. So, to uh, this different uh, high-speed EMU with uh, different uh, types of uh, track will lead to some compatibility problem between each other. So, uh, under this complicated condition, a series of uh, severe challenges, both in high-speed railway design stage and in high-speed train operation stage, have to be faced. So this which only presents the wear problem of Chinese high-speed railway system. Uh, the second part of this uh, the background is just overview of Chinese high-speed uh, high wheel, wheel, wheel. The rarity of the wear of wheel and the rail in Chinese high-speed system expresses two 
spiritual. First one is the absorbed whale rat is very, very raw. The natural whale rat of whale tide uh, was observed to be very uh, small value, such as that value. And uh, also, the rat of rare top, the whale rat is only 0 0.05 to 0, 0, uh, 0 0.08 millimeter per year. If there is no other loss considered, then the service life of the rail could be more than 100 years. So, preventive rail reprofiling and rail grinding are affordable. The second uh, feature is uh, uneven wear is of great concern. There are uh, many key problems, including wear polygon, wear corrugation, uh, wear hollow wear, wear flange wear, wear side wear, uh, wear and uh, even wide, uh, just like this uh, foot. Uh, we can talk about this uh, wear from two directions, uh, we, one around the longitudinal and another around the lateral direction. So we just uh, uh, discussed the characteristic influence causes and the countermeasure of this uh, very important uh, problem due to well. The second part, uh, I would like to uh, talk about the uneven wear around the longitudinal direction. The first one is the wear polygon. Uh, wear polygon uh, become uh, an increasing important uh, problem currently uh, in Chinese high-speed uh, train. Uh, everyone knows the definition of polygon. Uh, the important thing is the the order of the polygon, just to show in this figure. Uh, the actual roughness of the wheel surface is always the composition of different, with different order. That figure show a uh, measured result uh, at uh, EMU with 300 uh, km per hour running speed using FFT. The, we can get the, the peak in the spectrum corresponding to dominant polygon order, uh, just as like uh, the right uh, figure. There are 1, 8, 12, and 20 order. Uh, this, this order uh, with very significant uh, the influence. And the dark, dark line shows uh, that figure is uh, the ISO uh, limit, but for rail, not for wheel. Uh, that for wheel are still lack, but we can just make a reference. So it's a very many uh, significant order simultaneous in this uh, actual wheel. There are some a characteristic, one is the high order. Many high order polygons were observed in our EMU. And uh, here shows uh, some typical uh, me uh, measured result for different kind of uh, EMU with uh, 300 km per hour and three, uh, 250. This is different from the typical one to five order polygon observed in uh, IC well since about 20 years ago. But the low order one is also observed in Chinese UMU, uh, but with very uh, small uh, influence. The second is uneven plastic deformation accompanied. Uh, that figure shows the measured result uh, there is a good agreement between wheel and hardness. Reprofiling with a radical cut of only 0 0.5 to uh, 1.5 millimeter 
uh, cannot remove the hardened uh, rail completely, which is the typical value used early days. Now, current, uh, we use the uh, typical cut above two millimeter, uh, so as to completely remove the polygon. About the effectiveness of the rip profiling, um, currently, rip profiling operation can remove the hard, high order polygon, just shown as uh, this uh, figure, but not for the lower lower one. And uh, this is determined by the structure of uh, toning less. And uh, uh, this slide shows the reason. I will not uh, uh, say detailed uh, reason here. And we will uh, give in the full, full length uh, article. The wheel pattern evolution. We also do many um, tests uh, with different marriages. The polygon amplitude increase with the marriage uh, while the pattern kept unchanged. After reprofiling, for example, in this uh, figure, at uh, three, uh, 300,000 kilometers, re okay the uh, polygon will with a very similar pattern was found at uh, 400,000 kilometers, probably due to the incompletely removed. Uh, the consequence of this kind of polygon, it is uh, easy to imagine the, that wheel, -wheel, uh, wheel polygon can deteriorate the wheel, -wheel interaction and result in significant vibration. Uh, that can induce to large wheel set acceleration. From this uh, figure, the measured result uh, we can find for the 18th order polygon can result in very large actual box uh, vibration acceleration increased by 20 times. And also large wheel rail contact force. Uh, we, using the vehicle track corporate dynamic model, we can uh, simulate the wheel rail contact force due to the polygon excitation. And uh, we found uh, the dynamic load may be two times of the static ones uh, uh, with using this, uh, uh, this, this uh, measured uh, polygon. And the more noise emission, uh, that result is also the uh, measured result at the inner noise of a EMU in a coach with a CH380 EMU. And uh, we find that the noise uh, in the inner noise decreased by 8 to 10 dB in the range above. Uh, 125 hertz, uh, and uh, and it can cause this to the component particle damage. Excited uh, vibration can transmit upward to the vehicle system and downward to the track system, leading to different types of uh, particle damage. Uh, here, shown some uh, observed uh, uh, fault. So can uh, lead to the crack and uh, the damage in the fastening and also other component. The root cause of high speed fog, uh, I believe the uh, initiation mechanism, I think, uh, uh, is that the system resonance excites or the false vibration okay uh, induced contact for oscillation. And uh, predicted uneven well at the favor of the wavelengths, then finally you know, uh, re uh, result in wheel polygon. Uh, well, the result of vibration are from is the king to understand this uh, problem. 
uh, let's take the EMU with 23rd polygon uh, as an example. And uh, the passing frequency is 581 hertz. First, from the vehicle uh, analysis, we're using the model analysis in static, and then we find the many uh, eigen mode uh, in the pa uh, near the passing frequency. For example, uh, around the 600 hertz. Uh, how about uh, the, co uh, the, 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 the test result? We use the Hamel test and uh, find uh, uh, also the, there is a uh, dominant uh, frequency near the passing frequency. How about the running test? So we also uh, carry out the, the measurement uh, on the operation condition and uh, find there is a uh, dominant uh, frequency. So the summary is the egg uh, mode of working matching the passing frequency of the 23rd order program existing both in static and dynamic condition. So from vehicle we can say maybe how about from the track? Uh, also taking the same example, uh, but no obvious peak uh, com uh, could be found uh, in the Hamel test. No, this uh, the, the one thousand has is a ping 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 resonance, and uh, the running test also shows no obvious uh, eigenvalue at uh, around that passing frequency. So it should not from the track. The wavelengths of polygon meet the following uh, characteristic. It divides the circumference of wheel, that is the wheel pattern in phase every circle. If not divided the wheel pattern at various circle tend to depress one another owing to the phase dif difference, leading to even well at in the end. So polygon should be a consequence of bulky resonance. Uh, polygon okay, okay when its wavelengths divide the circumference of well. The second uh, topic is uh, on the real corrugation uh, in typical Chinese high-speed railway. The first example is on Shanghai to Chengdu line. Uh, the 250 km per hour level line. And uh, we found the corrugation with wavelengths of 60 to 80. And uh, the second one from Beijing, Shanghai, there are two uh, major uh, wavelengths. And more examples in, uh, we found in other. Uh, right. The consequence of high speed rail also can uh, lead to large contact force. Uh, we can uh, find the vertical contact force increase by 120 percent for that kind of uh, rail corrugation with 350 kilometer running ad ad addition. Um, another uh, example shows the larger acceleration of rail, uh, quite quite large increment, and also more noise emission and component dynamic, just like the wheel polygon. The root cause of high-speed rail line, it is evident in Chinese high-speed railway that the periodical mark left by rail pre-grinding to remove the decoverous rail can easily initiate real kind of, uh, corrugation if the wavelength is favored. Uh, I think this, uh, you have to do quite much more research on that uh, uh, topic. Uh, I, now I would like to uh, invite the Dr. Xin Zhao to give the second uh, 
uh, part presentation. Okay, everyone, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, um, my name is Xin Zhao. I will continue the second half of this presentation. Um, as mentioned by Professor Jay, we have a lot of children are even where. We also got lateral or even where. And as you can see here, we have mainly two types, hollow wear and the gate side wear or all the wheel flange wear. I will talk about uh, respectively. First, we, between 2011 and 12, we measured uh, about 35 high-speed bogies and found out 70% of the wheels with the hollow wear deeper than 0.2, and 50% of that in the range of 0.2 and 0.25. So it was indeed a problem, and what are the consequences? First, because of the hollow wear, the, lateral, the contact point will shift laterally, and the cause two point contact at the lateral shift and uh, two contact bands, as you can see from the figure at the end. So more specific consequences, as you can see from this figure, when the hollow wear is, exists, the measured lateral acceleration of the wheel set will be much higher than those without the hollow wear, which is the new wheel. And we build up our numerical simulation models and to capture this uh, results, and it uh, rep uh, reproduced the measured results very nicely, as you can see here. And this is the model we built up. And with this model, not only get the lateral acceleration, we also get more detailed results. You can see from the blank line, the continuous blank line on the real top is the contact point uh, uh, with new rails new wheels, but with the hollow wheels, the contact beds will divide two, and it's not continuous, so lateral shift. The other consequence is the hollow wheel, wheel the hollow wheel, uh, wheel will stimulate the occurrence of rolling conduct fatigue, and this fatigue can occur on both edges of the hollow wheel because of the larger friction forces and the smaller radius on the edges, so from the the left side is on the inner side, and the right side is from the outside, on the edge. The root cause is because on the speed line, we have a very narrow contact bed, as you can see from the left one. This was initially specially designed to ensure the high stability of the high speed train at high speed. But this is the side, uh, this, the, as a side effect, it stimulates the uh, occurrence of the hollow wear because the wear is more concentrated, as easy to imagine. In contrast, for the traditional low speed railways, the rear top is much flatter, so there was no such problems. Uh, another problem is uh, uh, wheel flat wear and the rear side wear, but I have to specify here this problem only occurs on the uh, very sharp curves which connecting the vehicle yards and the main lines. No one uh, cannot occur on the main lines. So uh, here's the monit uh, it's a monitoring test results we observed from the sharp curve connecting the yards. And you can see within about a year, the, the rail gauge corner was complete, uh, almost removed away, and that is the wheel profile. And if you see it clearly, we can see the newly, the newly profiled wheels actually is different from the new wheels. That's because we uh, introduced the thin flange profile. Why to, uh, uh, to introduce this one is because we explain this slider. If we got flange wear, and if we want to restore the profile with the original one, one millimeter flange wire, we need to cut off three millimeters. But instead, we use the thin flange wire profile, the, the material move will be much lower. So that is why we use this profile to, uh, re, uh, to, 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 to repair the hollow wire, the, the flange wire. Sorry. Uh, 
the, the fourth part, countermeasures. We divide into the countermeasures approximately two parts. The first, validated by practice, and second part, on the test and the considerations. Um, the first countermeasures we validated against real polygon is try to run the EMU trains with the tangent speed as, on as many different tracks as possible. This is because from the prerequisite we uh, mentioned above, the polygon can only occur when its wavelength divides the circumference. So the, with the wear pattern repeat itself in every cycle. You can imagine if you change the speed, the frequency keeps unchanged, the wavelength will change. So at many different speeds, the prerequisite will be not to be met. So at the end, no polygon. Is that true? We tried. And in 2014, we, there's a new build train was running for a test on an open track, and it ran 70,000 kilometers at almost constant, constant speed of 250 kilometers per hour, and it got severe polygons. Later on in 2016, the same train was moved to another line for commercial, uh, commercial operation because of the stops, he can, it has to stop. So the frequency, uh, the speed map you can see from the top, it's, uh, it varies almost constantly. So as the, as, the, as, as the end, at the end, you can see from the spectra, after 127,000 kilometers, there's no polygons was observed. So basically, this uh, proved our uh, measure. The second one, we also observed wheels of different diameters, and it's found the order varies with the diameter. This is because at the same speed, the wavelength is different. It's approximately the same. And when the diameter reduces, so the order also reduces correspondingly. To further confirm this phenomena, we tried to install wheels of different uh, uh, diameters on one EMU train in 2017. Here's the result we obtained. You can see on the wheels with the polygons, it corresponds very well with the diameters. So in consider of this situation, we can understand there might be very dangerous diameters for polygon occurrence. Take uh, this as an example. At the, free, at the speed of 300 kilometers per hour, there are three dangerous diameters, which is easier for polygon occurrence. Uh, this figure was obtained by numerical simulation. And uh, the red point represents the dangerous diameters. And uh, the other figures uh, it's, uh, represent different rolling speeds, because you can see from the horizontal axis. Yeah, if we understand this in advance, we can um, try to avoid these dangerous diameters. Or, we sh for example, we can shorten the uh, reprofiling period when it approaches these diameters, or just uh, avoid it by much larger material removal. The second measure, a validated measure, is the, we call it intelligent uh, trade trimmer, but it's not really intelligent. Huh? This, we apply it onto the wheel, and uh, we designed one trimmer and applied it for tests. And here is what, got, what we got, the results. You can, you can see from the left side, with, without trade trimmer, and the right side, with trade trimmer, you can see the difference, the amplitude of the 19 to 20th order of a polygon, it's much lower when the trend trimmer is applied. But we have to specify we didn't optimize this trade trimmer when we, for this uh, uh, trial. So it has still have the potential to further improvement. Uh, against hollowware, the most important measure is to apply the thin flange profile. So 
when a thin flange profile is applied, you can increase, decrease the equivalent chronicity near the flange road. And in this case, the high stability in the presence of hollow wear and uh, is, is ensured, and more distributed wear is dis distributed. So the uh, hollow wear problem was basically under control. Um, actually, we have also applied this methodology to a new wheel profile design for the latest uh, CR400 uh, EMU trends. And the, the practice in the past years has proved it was a great success. So the problem was solved. Uh, against the corrugation, that is uh, quite easy. The, as mentioned above, the corrugation are triggered by the grinding marks left by the uh, pre-grinding of rails. So the solution is also straightforward. We just re uh, change the grinding marks, the, the wavelength of the grinding marks, let it away from the wavelength of the uh, corrugation. So it can, but to do so, we can uh, choose a better grinding speed or you can modify the structure of the grounding machine and change the hiking frequency a little bit, and the problem will be solved. And nowadays, uh, in the past years, no corrugation reoccurrence has been reported yet on the Chinese high-speed network. So it was basically solved. And uh, about the flange wear, and uh, it's not really related to the main lines. I will just skip this one. Uh, the countermeasures on the test, and the one important thing is uh, for the turning lathes, because uh, uh, there's two, point, two content points on the driver wheels. If the content points of the two driver wheels are in phase, the wheel will move vertically following the, the polygon. So result, uh, lead to the, this result. You can see after the profile, the high order polygon are still there with significant magnitude. So the solution to this, we, uh, we change the distance between the two driving wheels. So we, change, we let the uh, two contact points out of phase, it should be solved. That's, that measure is still under a trial at a condition. Uh, uh, against the wheel hollowware, we it's also possible by the tread trimmer. So the basic philosophy is we introduce a new irregular wear onto the irregular wear related by the hollow, by the wheel real contact. So two irregular plus will be even and will be solved. And again, another uh, measure is we apply uh, multi-real uh, multi profiles. On one section, we apply profile A. It is resulting in a hollow wear indicated by red. On the other section, we apply profile B, and results in the blue hollow wear. And in combination, that will be quite good. So that's what's uh, further. But uh, the problem with this one is maybe it's might, uh, quite costly and uh, complicated, complicated for the maintenance. And we can apply those for our profiles by grading, of course. Oh, finally, we go to some uh, summaries. Um, first, about the high-order polygons. Uh, it occurs in the high-speed uh, wheels. Uh, it should be caused uh, by the resonance of the bogey and excited by the wheel irregularities. And it occurs when the wavelength divides the circumference. And uh, so it uh, has some uh, dangerous speed or dangerous uh, parameters. And the countermeasures against the wheel polygon include um, we change the frequency and uh, run on different lines or improve the reprofiling profiles to, improve, to reduce the initial roughness and also use the child trimmer. For the uh, corrugation, uh, it also occurred on the high speed network and it was, triggered, it was triggered by the left grounding marks. So the, 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 the countermeasures is straightforward just to change the painting of the grounding marks. And uh, the lateral instability problem caused by the hollow wear, and uh, this countermeasure against the hollow wear 
it's uh, to introduce the thin flange profiles and the multiple wheel rail profiles and the tread trimmer and, and so on. Um, at, at the end, the sharp curve uh, um, problem, uh, the, the uh, wheel flange wear and the rail gear side wear related to sharp curve is not a really a high speed problem, so we don't focus on too much here. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for that talk. It's very interesting to hear about the, the challenges of uh, introducing high-speed lines. In the UK, we have slightly different challenges. But uh, in the same time you build tens of thousands of kilometers, we might build 50, but we'll see. Okay, um, are there any questions? We've got about five minutes for questions before, before the coffee break. So I've got one here. I just want to focus on wheel polygolization. Uh, you said that uh, some boggy natural frequencies can be involved, but in fact, uh, around uh, 600 hertz, you have plenty of natural frequencies on the wheel set and on the boggy. So did you uh, perform some investigation to point out which are the typical natural frequency which are involved in wheel polygonization? Actually, we have indeed have some uh, uh, the ongoing projects to identify which high frequencies are related to the high uh, order polygons. Uh, it's not uh, completely mature yet, uh, but from the re uh, presentation we show uh, in today, um, we can make, a, uh, as you can see, it's that we didn't find the eigen frequencies from the track side, but we indeed found them from the track side, uh, both from uh, simulations, hammer tests, and the running tests. Um, so we, we don't know what, what is the concrete uh, eigen mode, but uh, uh, we indeed uh, can make uh, approximately sure it should be from the vehicle side. The question you asked why uh, there's plenty of um, uh, eigen frequencies, yes. We also found out there's plenty of them. Uh, our understanding is, as we mentioned, its occurrence needs a prerequisite. The wavelength must uh, be uh, divided the whole circumference, and it keeps long enough to grow up. So it's actually a very strict condition for its occurrence. It needs a lot of, uh, uh, for example, we take uh, if we change the, uh, the train to another line with a varying speed, it disappears, and actually nothing was changed. Yeah. So we, are, we, 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 we wish we can give you more concrete answer in the next uh, uh, years. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah.